Hey, hey, great day everyone, Jerisha Hawk here. Um, today we're gonna talk about something really spicy because inside of my Facebook group or as I continue to talk uh, to individuals who are interested in joining services at Cell, the similar or the same pain point keeps coming up over and over and over again. Um, I'm running into individuals where they know how to serve, meaning in the sense that they are you know, very confident in their ability to be able to support their client with experiencing a transformation, solving a problem or getting a result, but they're stuck on how do I actually get the client? Like, how do I actually sell my service? How do I actually like get the client to say yes, to make a payment so I can do what I do best which is actually serving the client. And if you can relate to that pain point, just pop in the comments, say yes, throw up a hand, do something and let me know, because that's what we're gonna talk about today, um, to make sure that you, you more than likely you know how to serve. You already know what you need to do, you already know what the client needs and how to support them with you know solving their problem, but you're just really stuck on how do you actually get that client? Like how do you actually get the payment? How do you actually convert that client um, so you can go do what you do best? And one thing um, before we even dive into specifics about this today, which we're going to talk about in just a little bit, I want you guys to think about dating for a second because building a business and converting clients and getting paid clients is very similar to building relationships um, with a loved one or with a friend. Um, but we'll talk about loved ones, for example. And when you start like as a business owner, it is your responsibility to court your prospect. Just like if you were thinking about dating and being in a relationship, it is the responsibility, you know, well, if we're talking about women, for the man to pursue. And it's your responsibility to choose. And the same thing is true in building a business. So when you think about relationships, like you never just, you know, I think, um, and when you're selling a service, primarily you are, people are paying for the promise that is on the other end. So if you're selling, if you're running a service-based business, um, this makes it, you know, the, there's just more risk involved before somebody's willing to make a buying decision, mainly because they're buying a promise, right? Because if you're, if you're selling a service, um, that promise is not fulfilled until after payment is made and once you actually start working together. So for example, if you're a copywriter, um, and let's say you're writing a, um, you know, email sequence for a potential client, you know, that is a service that you're delivering, but me as a customer, I have to hire you first, pay you before I actually get the deliverable. So there, you know, really your potential client in a service-based business is buying the promise that you are able to clearly communicate in regards to the problem that you're going to be solving and the outcome that you're going to provide after I pay you and after we work together. So that's just something that you need to be aware of when you're running a service-based business. But just like in relationships, um, a commitment is being made when cash is exchanged, okay? So how can, like in a relationship, you're not just running up to some random person on the street saying, will you marry me, let's be committed. Like you have to grow and build a relationship with that individual, get to know them, um, start to like them, you know, get them to trust you before you're even willing to make the invitation and make the ask to say, do you want to go steady? And then once you start dating and you guys are going steady, things are going good, you're building the relationship, then another invitation gets made saying, do you want to be committed to each other for life? And in building a business, like I mentioned before, it is your responsibility to court your prospect. And it is your responsibility to create opportunities for them to make a commitment. And that's through the form of you asking, you know, inviting them um, into something, whether that's onto your email list or inviting them to your Facebook group or inviting them to get onto a sales call or inviting them to actually go steady and get committed and make the buying decision. Okay, so one thing that I think is important, like, you know, the very first thing I want us to talk about here, what does it actually mean to establish yourself as an authority? I think we hear that term thrown around a lot, like you need to build your know, like, and trust factor before somebody's willing to buy. You have to establish yourself as an authority figure, but nobody really explains what that actually means. And how I define and what I know to be true when it comes to establishing yourself as an authority, that's really how well are you communicating that you are credible, that you have like, that you are credible and that you have competency around the problem that you say that you can help them solve. What, so I'm going to just say that again because I want to make sure everybody understands that because I, it, 
I get irritated when I hear everybody out there throwing around. You need to build your know, like, and trust factor. You need to just be creating content. You need to, you know, establish yourself in his authority. But, like, nobody's really telling you, okay, I hear what you're saying, but what does that actually mean? How can I put my hands on that and know what that means for me as I'm building my business and I'm putting myself out there? I define establishing your authority as building your credibility and your ability to show your competency as it relates to the problem that you solve, okay? So that is the first thing. You need to be able to show that you are credible. So if you're saying that you can help people solve whatever problem, you need to be able to show that you have, like, that you are credible and that you have competency, that you, are, you have the ability to actually produce that result, right? That you're not just all talk and show that you actually have results and you have taken action and that you, you know, have the back end to support that, right? So, so really establishing yourself as an authority means uh, really being able for, not just for you to know that you're confident, competent, or for you to know that you're credible, but that you've been able to communicate that in a way where your ideal client can be able to, knows it believes it and is able to actually relay that back to somebody else so that's a huge huge distinction a lot of us like a lot of you you know how to serve you probably are credible you do have competency around a problem that you want to solve you know all these things unfortunately you cannot be the only client of your business right so you have to be able to communicate that in a way where your potential client knows it believes it and trusts it too okay so I hope that makes sense on the first point there. So now you're probably asking the question where, Jay, thank you for defining what being an authority actually means. How do I establish, you know, I, I know that I'm credible and I know that I'm competent as it relates to me solving a specific problem that I want to deliver in a service. But how do I communicate that in a way where other people understand the value of it? And they're also able to clearly understand what it is that I'm actually trying to do. And have you ever like, have you ever felt that stress or felt that pressure where it's like, I know what I do really, really well, but I have no idea how to get, you know, Sally down the street to understand that this is what I do. Or, you know, I know that I can serve my client and I know that I can get them results, but I have no idea. I, I, there's a disconnect here for me on how to make sure that they understand that I'm competent and that they can trust me in helping them get this result. Have you ever felt that way before? And this is how you do this, okay? This is really the, the core of the framework of what I teach my students and services at Cell. Because knowing how to serve is just one part of the situation, right? This is really the, the thing that distinguishes being a hobbyist and um, you know, offering your services around as for like you know nonprofit for for no money versus you actually building a business and having an exchange of cash flow and actually earning a return on you delivering a result for somebody else the form of payment in cash is you you need to know how to do these four very you need to have these four elements in place for you to be able to get somebody else to understand the value of your offer. Okay. First thing is you need to have, um, you need to, and I call this the pop method. This is what we teach in services that sell, is you need to pick one problem. Confused clients do not buy. And confused individuals will not remember a thing about you. So if you're out here trying to solve a million different problems, you're trying to be the doctor one day, then you're trying uh, to be the life coach the next, you're trying to be the fitness instructor the next day, and then you're trying to do email copy, and then you're trying to build world-class status, five-figure websites, and then the next day you're trying to offer like relationship therapy, like confused clients don't buy. You know, our brains process information in chunks and we move through information very fast. And if it takes too much effort for somebody to have to figure out what it is that you even do, they will just keep moving on to the next person who can clearly define what it is that they do and whether or not this can be a benefit to me. So you need to pick one problem. So this is really, really important because when it, and this is why I think it's so valuable to have what I call a signature service. You know, this is a four figure offer that solves a very specific problem for a very specific person. But in the first part for you to be able to get somebody else to understand that you're competent, you need to first be able to establish that you actually know what problem they have and that you can solve that problem. 
And that's the first step. You pick your problem. Pick one problem. If you cannot clearly communicate the problem that your service solves, they are never going to build the trust to be able to hire you and actually give you their hard-earned cash to solve that. Because if you as the business owner cannot clearly communicate what problem it is that you're solving, that will build a lack of disbelief in that potential client's eyes. Because if you can't even communicate that one simple thing, that's the premise of what I'm paying you for. Can you really actually help me? Like, are you actually credible? Like, do you are, do you really have a high level of competency in, in getting this result if you can't even tell me what problem it is that you're solving in, in a way that I can understand? And typically the issue is for many service providers, they're so good. Like you are probably so good at solving a ton of different problems, right? And maybe you have a really difficult time picking what problem it is that you want to focus on and solve. That's, that's usually the case that comes into play. And the, the, real, the thing that's important for you to know is as a business owner, you have to stake your flag. You have to make a decision. You have to go all in on something to build your track record and get known for that thing before you start trying to branch out and solve everybody in their mama's problems. Like, you know, um, you, you have to establish yourself showing that you are competent, not just saying that you're competent, because that's what you're doing now. I'm competent, I know how to do this, but nobody else knows it. So you have to show that you are competent through your actions and build a track record solving that one problem before you decide to start to solve other problems. This is why I think having a signature service is so valuable versus having the traditional Ascension model, you know, trying to solve, have three different offer, offers that solve three different problems. I'm a huge advocate on you solving one problem, building a track record that sh establishes that you're competent, that you have um, competency and that you know you have credibility by building a track record solving that problem before you start to go out and build multiple offers like you know the traditional sales funnels okay so you need to pick one problem second is you need to pick one person and what i mean by picking one person is who are you design who are, that problem that you're solving who are you actually trying to solve it for and it should be not some like like brush statement of you know a, a, a wide target audience it should speak to a specific person solving a specific problem so you should not be trying to solve this one problem for everybody in a mama either again the beginning like in order for you to really establish yourself as that authority build your build your credibility and get some consistent results solving a problem for a specific audience and um, I really like to look at this, you know, Seth Golden has been talking about this a lot in his new book, This Is Marketing, but it's all about who is your minimum viable audience, meaning who is the smallest audience that you can solve that specific problem for. And so many of us are trying to please the masses when we don't even have like 25 or 50 people who know what we do and care about, I care about us solving that problem. Like just focus on, you know, Focus on, again, pick one problem, pick one person, and then thirdly, how you really can establish your competency is your clients are on one side of the river, right? And, you know, they are trying to cross this river to get to the other side of where they want to be. So they're currently, you know, experiencing a problem, having a challenge, and they want to get to the other side of the river um, where their problem is solved and life is better and all things are great. But your goal is how are you helping somebody cross that river? And this is what I call you need to package a process. How can you build a bridge and make it very clear that these are the three to five steps that you're going to take your client through to get them a result? That is what establishes your competency and establishes you as an authority figure. Because if you are competent in solving a specific problem, for a specific person, you should be able to articulate the steps that somebody has to go through in order to achieve that result. And this is such a important component of packaging your offer that so many people miss the mark on. Because so many, like you're probably really, really good at serving your client and solving the problem, but you don't really, you don't have it written down on paper and you don't exactly know how you do it. Because all of your genius is just in your head. Somebody will come to you and say, hey, I need help with this. You know, and then you just go and like 
superhero mode. You just start solving problems because that's just what you know how to do. You know how to help them, um, you know, write their copy or you know how to help them, you know, trademark their, um, their, their business name or you know how to help them um, go through the process of buying a rental property. But again, in order for you to establish your authority, which means showcasing and communicating to them that you have competency in this, is you need to make it clear and plain so they understand what's happening. And so often, many of us as service providers, you're probably winging it. You probably, maybe you've never mapped out, okay, what is the process that I'm taking somebody through? It's kind of like having a, a college syllabus, right? When you sign up for, for class, a teacher gives you a syllabus. So you understand that they're competent, like they, in the sense that you know what's going to happen, what topics you're going to cover, when there's going to be a test, what milestones you need to hit in order for you to get a good grade. If you want to buy high, I mean, sign up for a class and you just show up and ain't no syllabus, ain't nobody telling you what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, how it's going to happen. Nobody's defining what success looks like for you. I would be concerned, <laughs> right? So the same thing is true for you when you're serving your clients and delivering your service. You need to package one process, meaning that there is a proven methodology, a step-by-step -step framework that you're taking your client through to get them from where they are to help them achieve that result. So those three things are so, so very important for you to be able to package your offer in a way that people are, are willing to buy it. Right? So you need to first establish yourself as an authority. And how you do that is by communicating those things, saying that this is who I'm for, but also drawing the line to say, you know what, this is who I'm not for. I'm not here to serve and support everybody. My service is not designed for everybody because nobody wants to buy anything that's for everyone, right? You want to be able to like, purchase something that has been custom designed and created for somebody who fits your characteristics and solves a specific problem that you have. I hope this is resonating with you guys, okay? Um, but then before that, now that, that now that we'll let a potential client know, okay, I like what they're saying. Okay, I'm starting to believe them a bit here. But the thing that's actually going to get them to cross the threshold and make the commitment, which is really ultimately what you're trying to have a potential client do. You're trying to help guide a potential client on making a decision. Whether that's for you or against you, your goal through the sales process is to get somebody to make a decision. And once they've made that decision, that's them, like in them exchanging cash, that's them, you know, communicating that they are now committed. That they not only believe you, not only like you, not only trust you, but that they're willing to jump in the water with you by giving you their cash or investing in your offer, or hiring you as a coach or whatever it is, making that form of financial exchange because now they have something to lose. And that commitment typically comes and you need to be able to also clearly guide that client and say, these are the steps that you're gonna have to take to get the result. And I've already outlined that for you. Make this exchange so I can guide you through that journey. That's it. That's really it. Those are the, like, those are the main three things that you need to have, the elements that you need to have in your offer in order for people to be at a point where they're willing to make a commitment to buy, okay? And then finally, now that we've talked about how do you establish yourself as an authority, right? You already know what you want to serve and you know how to serve, but these are the things that you need in order to, to have in place so you can position yourself to be able to sell, okay? And get people to actually say yes and to make that financial commitment and to make that exchange and hire you. So you need to establish yourself as an authority. You need to implement the POP method. You need to pick one problem, pick one person, package a process. And then now that is the core of your offer, right? Those three things establish that this is the offer that I'm selling. You should be able to clearly communicate that in a way for somebody else to understand. Now you need to think about, okay, how do I actually sell it? Okay, that's the thing that I'm selling and I'm able, you need to know what that offer is and know how to communicate those three things before you can ever get to a point of selling. But now you need to know what is the simplest way for you to go out there and sell your services. And I am a huge, huge advocate if you do not have a large audience, right? If you are don't have some blog that has thousands of people coming to it every month, if you do not have a podcast where thousands of people are listening every month, if you do not have some like raving Facebook group with thousands of people in it, if you do not have an email list, right? Like if you do not have an email list, you know, with 
thousands of people on it for you to reach out to and sell to there is a simple way for you to sell without having to build and create all those things before you start selling i hope i want you to those in the back i want you to hear this there is a simple way for you to sell your services before you build a big list before you create a, a, a popular blog, before you create a new and noteworthy podcast. Like there is a simple way for you to sell your services without having to do all those things before you sell. And the two step process that I use that allowed me to replace my salary, that I use to book over $60,000 in sales in one month, which allowed me to quit my job. The same process that I teach students and services that sell is one using live stream video i think live stream video and if you look at the statistics on any other platform facebook instagram youtube whatever live stream video is the preferred like form of content that these platforms prioritize so live stream video i know you might be thinking jay i can't go live i'm scared to go live just hear me out um, because if you're allowing those fears of allowing yourself to be seen and putting yourself out there, like if you're allowing that fear to hold you back from doing it, like you, you, you're going to have to work over that because that it's no matter what, if you're building a business, you have to position yourself to be seen on a consistent basis. And I truly believe that live stream video is the most powerful way for you to do it because it allows people to like, you're allowed to build that no like and trust factor on a subconscious level so much faster. Why? Because they can see you, they can hear you, they can engage with you, you can engage with them. Like, and the if you don't have money for paid advertising, these social media platforms prioritize live content to, you know, to a larger organic reach than any other form of content. So just just believe me on that one, okay? Is using a live stream video and inviting people to a sales call. That is the simplest way for you to sell your service. And, and doing live stream videos, having a call to action to get people onto a sales call and, and using your sale, uh, going guiding a client through that sales conversation to get them to a point where they're, 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 you're converting them over the phone. That is it. No complicated funnels, no trip wires, no $7 offer that leads to a $97 offer that leads to a $2,000 offer. I mean, legitimately having live stream videos, getting people on a sales call and inviting them into a four figure service straight out the gate, not getting them on your email list. Like, and the beauty of using this simple process to sell, it can be like, how can it be that simple? It's not easy. Let me say that out the gate. It is not easy, but it is the simplest way for you to replace your salary. It is the simplest way for you to have more certainty when it comes to your cash flow. It is the simplest way for you to create stability in your financial bank account so you don't have to go back and get the job that you just quit or go back to corporate America after you've been laid off or anything like that. Facebook Lives, live stream video, and having a call to action to get people on a sales call is the simplest way for you to sell your services. And this is not a method that I would use if you're trying to sell something like a low ticket offer. Um, I like if you're just trying to sell some, you know, nineteen dollar ebook or some forty eight dollar planner. I wouldn't use this methodology. Um, this process is really used for you to sell a high ticket service. You know, because my I'm a huge advocate. Like, look, none of us want to waste time right? Like, and you're, you aren't dumb. So your potential clients aren't stupid either. So why make them jump through all these hoops and solve these problems that really aren't the real issue just in, before you ever invite them to buy your high ticket thing? Like, like, look, if I know what my problem is and you have a solution to it, why are you making me jump through hoops? Why do I got to get on your email list, wait 17 days before you make me buy some $7 thing, before I ever see the $100 thing, before I ever see the $2,000 thing that you offer? So I'm just really big on like cutting through the BS. If, and this means you work, you may work with a, a smaller amount of people, but like, I don't, I'd rather care about working with five people at a $2,000 price point so I can hit my $10,000 a month goal than trying to satisfy thousands of people that I would have to convert if I was selling some $20 thing to hit a $10,000 income goal. It's all about quality over quantity. And when you really focus on that, when you really focus on, you know what, I'm gonna do what I can to solve a real problem 
for somebody in a, you know, that minimum viable audience, a specific problem that they have. And I know in order for me to deliver a premium experience and to be able to guide that client with a level of intention that, that, that is required for them to get that result, it comes with a higher price point offer. Like it's a, it's a higher price point for that type of service. It, and it fine. Then it's like, okay, communicate that to the people who want to solve that problem. Not the people who want to pacify their problem, not the people who want to put band-aids on their bullet wounds, not the people who want to just stay busy in their business. Like, no, that's not what I'm building my business for. And I know that's not what you build your business for. You're not building your business to just keep people busy. Like you created your business because you want to create impact. You want to help people change their lives. You want to help individuals get real results. So if you know that the thing that they need to get those real results is your high ticket offer, just go straight to it and give it to them and make that invitation. And I think the simplest way for you to do that is by doing Facebook Lives, live stream videos, and getting people on a sales call. And those two things, you just sell them your high ticket offer right there on the phone. No other hoops to jump through. It's very clear. It's very simple. It's very straightforward. So we covered a lot today. <laughs> and if you need to make sure that you have this video on lock that you maybe maybe need a reference, you might need to listen back to it and take some notes. Definitely share this to your personal page so you have it saved where you can reference it again and again. Um, if you have somebody else out there who needs to hear this message, share the wealth. You know, 2019 is a year of prosperity and abundance. So, you know, I'm just here to help all of us, you know, rise up, right? Your wins are my wins. So share this with somebody else who needs to win. And thirdly, if you are vibing with anything that I said today about having a simple way to sell your services, about um, packaging a clear offer, about using those, those three elements that we just talked about to establish yourself as an authority so you can even position yourself to sell, I invite you guys to join my free Facebook group. There's over a thousand people in there. We're, we're crazy, crazy engaged community of individuals who are interested in creating a high ticket offer and selling it consistently. So you can just visit dreeshahawk.com backslash join. Answer those three little quick prompt questions and you guys can get access inside of our Facebook community where we continue, when we have more conversations um, about what is really required for you to go out there and sell and how you can start, you know, creating and selling your own signature service. So I look forward to seeing you guys inside of the Facebook group um, and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye y'all.